Welcome to another Music Talk Tuesday, and today I thought it would be cool to discuss songs that are about rock and roll. Um, last week, I sort of briefly discussed why uh, I feel rock and roll's popularity, in particular within the 21st century, is kind of dying away. Um, so for this episode, I thought it would be interesting to discuss some songs that are sort of about the genre and uh, sort of reflect onto what the genre has to offer. Um, and again, in a loose sense, uh, some of these songs are a little bit more edgier than others. Um, they're all from different time periods. So without further ado, let me go through them and um, kind of give you my thoughts uh, about them. First one right out of the gate is one that I think a lot of people know, especially if you are familiar with films, um, <laughs> in particular fairly popular films that have been uh, sort of, you know, I guess you could say kind of part of our culture uh, over the years. Um, and uh, this song has been sort of used uh, as part of that. and. That song is Old Time Rock and Roll by Bob Seger. Yes, this song. Um, what I really like about this song is just how full of energy and how much fun it is. I mean, th this song is fun to listen to. I mean, uh, you do feel like you are kind of embracing that, um, that kind of rock and roll style. But at the same time, it's not super edgy. It's not really in your face. It's just kind of, um, full of, uh, uh, just full of this, uh, exuberance. And, um, at the same time though, it's, it's, it's still very, um, geared towards trying to kind of, um, address rock and roll in an interesting way. Um, because basically, uh, what the person is saying throughout the lyrics, uh, which was, I think, a common thing, uh, at least back in the time when this song was made, within the 70s, um, uh, you saw disco music in particular becoming fairly popular. And, you know, you kind of had this sort of battle um, between rock and roll and disco music. And um, he sort of says how he just will stick to the old rock and roll and he doesn't really care for the um, new stuff within the song. Um, and uh, even though there is a, even though the genre, it sticks to the genre of rock and roll, it still offers this really unique blend of sound with the instruments and you know, that, that, that whole instrumental with, you know, uh, the piano and, you know, the, I believe it's a, I believe it's a, a saxophone, although I could be wrong. Um, but there is a, there seems to be a variety uh, encompassed within this particular song. So it's not purely um, just guitar. And uh, I think this really ultimately works to the song's advantage because there's just so much, there's a lot, a lot of different elements to it. And I think for this kind of a song, it really works. And although he does have sort of the bias towards uh, rock and roll, um, it's, it's sort of at the same time kind of just showcasing the genre itself, you know, how he's, uh, like he says, like within the, the song, the kind of music that soothes the soul, you know, and I'll reminisce about the days of old, you know, it, it brings out this kind of, I guess, nostalgia for him. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's just, it's, although the song is rather opinionated in its view in regards to rock and roll, it still, I think, holds up as being just very, um, just very passionate while at the same time just having a lot of fun and encompassing a lot of different elements and in doing so creating a very unique and fun song to listen to. So um, this one is 
one in particular that I rather enjoy and I think really works for uh, a song that is about rock and roll because it does address it in a rather interesting way. Um, so I think it ultimately ends up working. And again, this um, particular uh, song has been used time and time again. Uh, but overall, it um, it does its it, it fulfills its purpose by being sort of a, a symbol of, uh, I guess you could say, nostalgia and also a uh, a a force of um, the ability and influence that rock and roll has had. So. Uh, in that respect, I think it definitely works. So uh, that's, I think, though, ultimately all I can say about that song. But moving on to the next song, uh, I Love Rock and Roll by none other than Joan Jett. Um, this is from, as you can probably tell if you know Joan Jett, the 80s, um, as opposed to the previous song, which is from the 70s, oh, where we had disco. Um, and... A lot of 80s rock in particular is rather edgy. It's it's a very, um, it, it kind of goes back to basics, um, like more of the basic instruments, but then at the same time it puts a lot more of an emphasis on the, on making it more, um, making it more gritty, making it more, um, kind of more in your face. Um, but personally I don't find this song in particular to be so in your face. Um, I, I just think it's kind of a, it's designed to be sort of a kind of an empowerment sort of ballad because it's it's a rather very individualistic song um, because she says throughout it, I love rock and roll, so put another dime in the jukebox, baby. I love rock and roll, so come and take your time and dance with me. In other words, you know, I, I like she's she's she almost does it in a very self confident you know kind of. Um, in, a, in a very uh, energetic way that's more towards on a tone of being um, edgy and kind of um, uh, just just kind of leveling herself up there to being cool. Um, <laughs> you can kind of tell she's trying to sort of be hip throughout the song. Um, and she kind of wants to display, like, how cool the genre is. And, um, and, I, and, I, and it seems to be something that she sort of, you know, just dedicated um, her career to. So I think to only express it through a, a song, the genre itself, uh, and how she has a very strong attachment to it, um, I think ultimately ends up working for what it's trying to say. And uh, it has this sort of tendency to uh, be this uh, in-your-face song in a way that says uh, that I own the room. Like, you know, just, I love rock and roll. So put another dime in the jukebox, baby. You know, just, it, it has that, you know, it has that quality to it where you, you feel like She's trying to put herself out there as a sort of symbol of the genre and sort of what it represents as far as, you know, individuality and things like that. So uh, I think for the most part, this song really works for what it's trying to say. Is it a little bit more edgy? Yes. Is it a little bit more um, on the kind of uh, so, sort of a snarky side to uh, at certain points yeah uh, especially with its uh, lyrics and just from Joan Jett's voice yeah but overall I think it ultimately works and its overall enjoyment I think has stemmed uh, throughout the years and usually when people think of rock and roll they'll think of this song in particular so I think it only makes sense that I would include it on this list but moving on to song number three um, Still Rock and Roll by Billy Joel. <laughs> um, and, uh, 
this song in particular, uh, I believe, came out in the later 70s, similar to the first song that I mentioned. Although, again, it is sort of addressing something different and um, rather, I think, kind of universal to the sort of the, the whole genre. Um, uh, the genre, obviously, of rock and roll has evolved for over years and years, and all these different subgenres have been created. And in doing so, there's often kind of a, a change of um, style and the way in which things are, you know, the way in which that you showcase yourself as a performer, as an artist, uh, uh, a musician, a band member. And um, basically, Billy Joel kind of says within this song, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, the, you know, the clothes or, you know, a car you know, I, I drive, it's still rock and roll to me, it's still music to me, because I'm not going to put, you know, uh, put, put fame, so to speak, or try to please people for the sake of pleasing people, I'm just going to do my own thing and, you know, just go back to just the basics and just, you know, just having it be all about the genre, having it be all about rock and roll. You know, it's still rock and roll to me. It doesn't matter if, you know, certain styles change or if um, this and this is in particular popular right now. I'm going to just do my own thing uh, and what I like. Um, and from a lot of the songs that if you've heard of any of uh, any of Billy Joel's other songs, you'll notice too that he kind of, you know, he has this very kind of, you know, I do my things my own way, and you know, he's kind of very um, opinionated um, as far as that goes, so, and he doesn't seem the kind of person who wants to change himself, um, which is really understandable, and uh, I think that sort of appeals to people's understanding as far as um, music and, in particular, rock and roll is concerned, since it has had such a huge evolvement and has been heavily influenced through media and things like that, and, you know, having the images and the sounds change over the years, you know, it... it you could tell that maybe some artists were trying to do that for the sake of popularity instead of just doing their their own thing. And um, I think Billy Joel's song is sort of a testament to, you know, it should always be about the music over anything else. So, uh, yeah, I think that's really uh, ultimately all I can say, though, about that song. But moving on to the second to last one. Now, this one stems way back from in the 50s. And it's called Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and his Comets. Now, what I find very uh, enjoyable about this song is, is that you, you do feel like it is something out of the traditional uh, birth, so to speak, of, of rock and roll that sort of existed within the 50s, you know, Elvis being a, a big hit during the time. Um, and it's very energetic, it's upbeat, it's very positive, um, and instead of Joan Jett's song where it's very, like, individualistic and it has this, like, power sort of message, uh, this song is, is designed to just be about everybody coming together and just kind of having a good time, you know, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight, we're gonna rock, rock, rock till it's broad daylight, we're gonna rock, rock, rock until everything's all right everything's all right or something like that um so it's it's really just designed to be a song uh that is about um you know kind of embracing you know uh, good times and just you know having fun and not taking things so seriously and making things fairly over dramatic and things like that it's it's just trying to be kind of the fun innocent 50s that I think a lot of people seem to uh, know from, know and, and have seen uh, through uh, the media that has 
that was presented around during that decade and also sort of the economic state and things like that. So um, it's, uh, and basically, you know, rocking around is just sort of a way of saying, you know, we're going to rock, we're going to, you know, have fun. Um, and sort of that's, that's really the sort of essence of the genre itself too of rock and roll. So that's why I technically consider this one to be a song that is really about rock and roll because it is trying to embrace that earlier 1950s rock and roll kind of culture that was sort of based around, you know, kind of community and people, you know, having fun. And, you know, there was a, there, there's, again, it, it's very, there, there's just this innocence and also a simplicity to it that I think really is what makes it rather enjoyable. Um, and, you know, the people dancing and, you know, having a good time, you know, you feel like it's, it, it was a very pleasant era. Uh, so that's, I think, something that's uh, important to, to note about this song and uh, how I think it reflects on to um, the genre, especially during that time period. Um, last song that I wanted to mention it is It's a Long Way to the Top, If You Want to Rock and Roll by ACDC. Um, this song I think is rather interesting in that instead of it being about, you know, uh, having fun with rock and roll or uh, embracing it on an individual level or or um, saying that I'm not going to, to change even if there maybe is a change within the genre or you know or saying some kind of um, meaning that revolves around sort of um, self-expression I guess you could say um, this song by ACDC is purely down to the the logic um, as far as uh, as far as the um, ability to you know rise sort of to the top um, uh, because it is a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll you know if you want to be part of a band you know there is a lot of work involved there's a lot of headaches and uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, effort and time and energy and um, and I like how this song doesn't really shy away from that very significant point because a lot of the times, you know, the a lot of people uh, and, it, and it happens too, you know, in sports, I think, uh, too, like sports is another big category where there's a lot of people that want to be a part of it, but only a few really do make it to the top and um, build on that huge amount of success that they end up um, getting. Uh, and I think it's interesting because instead of having a very kind of, uh, kind of a uh, kind of a misery stricken tone to it. This song instead is fairly upbeat um, and at the same time also giving it some kind of edge so somewhat similar to uh, the Joan Jett song. So it, it has that going for it and I think that ultimately really works um, because I think at the end of the day um, ACDC is a band even even though they had to probably work really hard to get where they were. Um, and even though there were some others that maybe didn't have the same success that they had, um, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about what you're, what you're passionate about. And I think that's sort of reflected as, as far as the positive tone is concerned within the song. Like, you know, I mean, he, he says within the song, you know, it's a long way to the top, um, but you feel sort of um, that uh, that the, the lyrics don't go into as deep enough as what I think ultimately the song is trying to 
give you a feeling of. And I think that feeling is, is of, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, but then at the same time, you know, it's enjoyable. I mean, they, they seemed to enjoy their time being able to, uh, live this life of being musicians and artists. So, uh, I, I think that's really, um, sort of a part of what their message was. Um, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but I think if you listen to just how it sounds and sort of just look beyond the lyrics, I think there's, there are some connotations there that, that make you kind of think, yeah, you know, it is a long way to the top, but at the end of the day, even if I make it there or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to sort of do my own thing. Um, so I, I think that's really ultimately um, what its uh, primary message was. Um, but I'm sure there's people who can take whatever they can and um, try to interpret it for themselves however they wish. Um, but I think that's really ultimately all I can say about all of these songs. I think they're all rather interesting in how they showcase this particular genre. Um, I will try to focus on discussing some other genres because I know that there's um, definitely some uh, interesting topics that can be discussed there. Uh, for example, pop, I think, is, a, is also a perfect example of uh, involvement because we've seen that uh, evolve significantly, I think, over the years. Um, but overall, I think um, it th that... Uh, uh, all of these songs offer something unique um, when it comes to uh, rock and roll, and I'll be sure to put links all below so you can view them. Uh, but yeah, I think that's really all I can say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. But until next time, everybody.